Hello again, time to take a look at another couple of 8-bit Christmas games. Two different systems I'm looking at again today, and the first is the Commodore 64, and the game I'm going to look at this time is the official Father Christmas. Not quite sure how they made that official as opposed to unofficial, but there you go. Let's take a look at the fact file. So the official Father Christmas was released in 1989, published by Alternative Software, developed by Enigma Variations, and the price I paid for my copy was £1. It came as part of a bundle. Current going rate on eBay, £3 plus, although there is a copy on there uh, as a buy it now of 15 quid, which I don't think anyone's going to pay unless they really, really want a Commodore 64 Christmas game just in time for Christmas. So let's take a look at the packaging in a little bit more detail and then look at the game as well. Here's a closer look at the front cover, and as you can see, it says the official Father Christmas with a little Robin on there, and also there's the alternative software logo top left there. Then there's a, a pretty cheesy picture of Santa waving at you and a Christmas tree. And at the bottom there, you can see this is from their 2.99 range, uh, and also that uh, it was sold in aid of making money for the Save the Children Fund, which is a very nice gesture by the company. Uh, Spine's just got all that information on again, and the back cover's got, again, that information about it being for Save the Children, and some screenshots which, by the looks of it, are probably from the Amstrad version of the game. Um, you can see there Santa flying with his reindeer, delivering presents by the looks of things, and also there's some kind of platform section there as well, with ladders and uh, things around Santa's Grotto. So inside, once again, we've got the Save the Children fund logo, very prominent. And the instructions, got the loading instructions, and uh, lots of information about a fun-packed arcade game where you play Father Christmas or Santa. Uh, it's Christmas Eve, Santa's preparing to deliver all the presents, blah, 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 the usual stuff. So you've got to collect the parts of the sleigh, then you've got to collect um, presents, specific presents that you can choose from, uh, and then deliver the presents, basically. That's the short version of what those instructions are saying. And uh, inside... I think it's just the same stuff but in other languages yeah that looks like German there and Italian and whatever else I think that's it uh, a bit of copyright info and as I said that Save the Children logo very prominent once again so here we have the title screen once again with the Save the Children logo on and the high score table with the, some reindeer names on there. And in the background you can hear we wish you a Merry Christmas. Reasonable version of it done with a bit of Sid synthesizer action going on there as well. So let's get the game started. And you start by entering your name. And then you start the first level, and the aim of the first level is to assemble your sleigh. Um, a couple of things to mention, uh, anytime an elf touches you, if you're carrying a piece of the sleigh, um, it gets taken away from you and relocated somewhere within your house. Uh, on the um, status bar at the bottom there, you've got the time, which is currently a moon. Uh, basically, that eventually becomes a sun, and when it becomes daytime, it's game over. So you've got to get all this stuff done as quickly as possible. You've got to assemble a sleigh, and then you've got to get some presents and then you've got to deliver the presents. So here's the first piece of the slate. So you have to avoid the elves wherever possible and he's just stolen that from me now, the little bugger. Uh, this bit of the game is very annoying. It's all about timing and all about hoping that the elves don't run onto the screen and uh, steal you oh he's coming again now I don't believe this I'm in an infinite loop here we go finally so there you go there's one piece of the sleigh the next piece doesn't appear until um, the what you've dropped off the one before that was handy because that appeared really close so there's only one way to get around the house uh, which is up and down the ladders uh, the pieces can appear anywhere and what you hope for is that the pieces don't appear on the far side of the screen, which they have done in this case. So I've got to make my way all the way around here to get this piece here to then go all the way back. And obviously any time an elf gets me, they can redeposit the piece at any point. I well, was lucky because he ran into me and got me, but then I uh, handily it reappeared just in the right place. 
So, so far it's going pretty well. There's another piece really close to me, which is useful again. There's only one more piece left to get, I think, now. There it is. So the main thing to do is, if there's an elf on screen, don't pick the piece up. Oh, see, oh again, that's landing in just the right place for me. It's going really well, better than any previous go, in fact. So if I can just get this, no, he's going to get me, yeah, okay, so that's been relocated again now, somewhere. And it looks like it's on the wrong side of the house, yeah, it's as far away as it can possibly get. I haven't mentioned the music, by the way, um, Jingle Bells this time, obviously, again with some synth uh, action from the SID chip. Uh, graphically, it's quite nice, no complaints on that score. Oh, oh that's useful. You nick the piece again, but just happened to appear on the next screen, which is good. This is the worst bit, it's trying to get across this section. Oh, where's it gone this time? Back where it's starting now. Yeah, it can be very infuriating, and you can basically lose the whole game uh, just from trying to chase down one piece of the sleigh throughout the house. Okay, this time, hopefully, I can get it to the right place. Oh. Finally, right, okay, that's the first stage of the game done. So the next thing you do is you've got this Christmas list that you can uh, choose the presents for, basically. So it doesn't really matter what you choose. So let's have a computer, a uh, teddy bear, cricket bat, a tank, television, bit of a greedy kid and a uh, model train. So all you've got to do then is catch the items. That, the items drop from the top of the screen um, as quick as you can. You've got to collect them all. It's not too difficult. You just have to collect the ones that are yellow, basically. So the train keeps dropping. Eventually, I'll, I'll just end up in the right place to catch it. There we go. And there we go. That's that section over with, which then just leaves the delivery of the presents. Starting off in, I think, New York or a city, at least. Every so often, you'll come to a place where you need to drop a present. You can see the arrow there. And you've got to drop it into the right position. Avoid dropping it into the clouds and the other things that are bouncing around. There's birds and planes and things. I think you have to deliver about four or five presents on each section. Just try and get through as many as possible before it's daytime. As you can see, if you land on a, on a cloud, uh, they get taken away. So the graphics on this are pretty simplistic. Um, and it's got sort of Defender style multi-way scrolling, which is quite nicely done. Uh, but it's a very simple concept, it's just to drop the present where the arrows are. There we go, that's America completed, now we go to Europe, which is exactly the same but different scenery, uh, houses this time. Um, each of the successive stage gets a little bit more difficult in terms of the number of clouds that appear on the screen and so forth, I think other things that bounce around. This is getting annoying. Oh, for heaven's sake. Missed again. Got it at last. Yeah, yeah. you can't move up and down in this stage. You just uh, scroll across the top of the screen. Oh, so annoying. Got it. Okay, on to the next one. And as you can see, the sun's appearing at the bottom of the screen. So it's a question of how many presents I'll get to deliver before the sun comes up. was easily done. If you get it timed just right, sometimes you can drop them straight away. Other times you just end up floating backwards and forwards for ages. Probably only a couple more to do on this stage. Okay, that's Europe completed. Now we go to Africa. Uh, yeah, because all Africa looks like this. It's just palm trees and little uh, primitive huts. But there you go. It's only a game. It would be quite nice if it showed the sun coming up on the background, but that's probably a little bit much to ask from a Commodore 64 game. Again, the graphics reasonably functional in this stage, but quite nicely done. The music's pretty nice as well. There's no sound effects at all in any of the game, I don't think. I don't think I'm going to complete this, but uh, 
see how far I can get. It's all going to depend on the cloud coverage and the bird coverage and everything else. This seems to happen on every level, there's one uh, delivery that just becomes really difficult for some reason. There we go, that's Africa done. So now we're going to the Antarctic, which as we know is very well populated, uh, especially with Eskimos. I expect we've seen some polar bears in the Antarctic as well, just to complete the uh, complete uh, mess that is uh, what the Antarctic is about. And this is actually proving reasonably easy. I never move to the left for some reason. I always go from left to right. I, I, I might try going from right to left on the next stage if we get that far. This is going all right actually. So although there aren't actually any Eskimos in the Antarctic, I've delivered all the presence to them and the last stage is Finland which I'm pretty sure is part of Europe but for some reason gets its own separate uh, delivery whereas uh, Asia and um, Australia sort of areas don't get any deliveries at all because this is actually the final stage As you can see there's a lot more clouds making it rather tricky to get this one delivered. There we go. The sun's nearly up. Am I going to manage to do all the deliveries in time? There's probably one or two left to do. Oh, that was close. Yeah, that's delivered. This is probably the last one, which I might just do in time if I can. There we go. So there you go, that's it. That's the game completed basically. Another successful year, all the children are so pleased with their presents, yada yada yada, etc, etc. And that's it, game over. I got 16,000 points and that's all there is to it. Quite a nice little game, um, you know, for kids to play at Christmas, quite fun. Um, the first stage is a bit frustrating, the second stage is largely pointless, and the third stage is quite a nice little arcade action game. So, uh, compared to the other two 8-bit uh, games, that I reviewed recently, this one's probably the best of the bunch so far. Now we move on to one more game, which is actually for an 8-bit handheld system, the Game Boy Color, but I'm gonna be playing it on the GameCube with the Game Boy uh, adapter emulator thingy that comes with the GameCube. So we'll look at the fact file for that game in just a second. The game is called Santa Claus Jr., released for the Game Boy Color in 2001, and the publisher of the game was Joe Wood Productions, Developer was Neon Software, a German company. Price I paid for the game £3.99 p and that's for a loose cartridge and the current going rate on eBay is roughly that price for a loose cartridge, three to five pound or ten pound plus for a box copy. So I've got no packaging for the game, as I said it's a loose cartridge, so let's take a look at the game straight away. So coming up is a title screen, which is pretty nice, Santa Claus Jr with his big face on the screen there and then you get the menu which has got a number of options I'm not really sure what this one is uh, it, it would suggest to be uh, how many lives you've got or something like that I just leave it on two hearts uh, the lock is a password entry option uh, that's the music on or off that's the sounds on or off and that's the credits at the bottom which we won't bother looking at nice Christmas tree on the right there and clicking on this guy at the top will start the game music in the background is not Christmas music, it's actually Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, which seems a strange decision, um, but there you go. It's got some uh, beats and pulsing noises to jazz it up a little bit. So let's take a look at the game, and you start with some very, very jarring music, um, but some basically some screens that give you an indication of what's about to happen, so Santa Claus Jr is playing on his Game Boy, and a witch attacks Santa Claus. Uh, which means that he's turned into something, I think. Santa Claus Jr. Oh, there you go. I think Santa Claus has been turned into a little goblin or something. No, no, that's something else. There we go. Santa Claus has been shrunk and put in a jar. So, um, sorry, Santa Claus has been put in a jar. Santa Claus Jr. then takes over the job of Santa Claus. He's got to collect all the presents uh, and get somewhere, uh, probably to rescue Santa Claus at the end. So it's a scrolling platformer. Again, the music's fairly jarring, but you do get used to it. The idea is to collect as many presents as possible. 
Uh, you can also collect the candy canes, which after you've collected a certain number of them, you get an extra life. I think it's 20. Uh, there are enemies, uh, and you dispose of them in typical Mario Brothers fashion by jumping on the top of them. Uh, there are also, much like Mario, secret rooms, such as this one here, which gives you a limited amount of time to collect as much stuff on the screen as possible. How much time, I don't know, because it doesn't actually say. Oh, it does there, there's a clock to, ticking down the right, I missed that previously. So, you, as you can see, there's a present, which is the main thing to collect, and then there's lots of candy canes as well. Oh, I just noticed that countdown clock, as you probably gathered. So he's fairly uh, agile, uh, Santa Claus Jr, despite wearing this uh, oversized Santa Claus robe. Oh, that's what happens when a cat attacks you. Uh, but you can jump on and get rid of them, which is slightly mean. Although they're being mean to me, so maybe it's fair. Uh, so the, the backgrounds are quite nicely animated, you can see things like light switches swinging, curtains waving and things like that, it's quite detailed, the graphics are quite nice, obviously they designed for the small screen of the Game Boy Colour, so they're not massively detailed, but there's a lot of uh, charm in them despite them being relatively small. Uh, as you can see, some chairs double up as uh, springboards. Gonna leave that cat there, I don't really need to kill it. It doesn't really seem to be a score in the game, so collecting things doesn't add, add any kind of value to your score. So that's pretty much the first level completed, and uh, you get a code which is what you can enter to restart from that point on a future game if you get a game over. So let's proceed with the next stage, which looks much the same. Again, lots of nice detail in the backgrounds. Uh, the sounds are, you know, reasonable enough. The um, the music, as I said, is a bit on the jarring side. It kind of reminds me like music from the the Amiga sort of era. Ooh, get in. I'd be better off just avoiding that because I'm having no joy actually testing it. Now you get more hazards in the way of uh, holes in the ground, which if you fall down, you lose a life. And uh, the levels scroll upwards now, as well as left to right. A couple more candy canes we picked up there. And there's also checkpoints, the Christmas tree when you walk past it, it flashes, and that's a checkpoint which means you go back there if you lose a life. It's pretty easy thus far, um, it does get more difficult. But so far there's been nothing too challenging, uh, and it's quite a nice little game actually. Uh, not anywhere near as bad as the other Christmas games I've played. It's a decent platformer with a, a Christmas theme, rather than a Christmas theme tacked onto a pretty awful game. So I've made a bit of further progress in the game, and you can see some different kinds of enemies starting to appear. Here you've got birds that dive at you and are quite difficult to kill, so I'll just avoid them. The scenery is also changing a little bit. There's uh, some other different kind of objects that uh, you can see around the screen. Otherwise, it's much the same thus far. One thing I had not uh, pointed out is there's a way to kind of look ahead at what's coming on the screen, so I'll just try and demonstrate that here. So there's not really a lot there, but if I press the select button, you can actually scroll the screen along a little bit and see what's ahead of you, which is quite a nice touch. Doesn't serve a lot of purpose, but you know, it didn't serve a lot of purpose in that bit in particular anyway. There might be places where it's more useful. So this level is a lot longer than the previous level, which was pretty much just an introduction. There's another checkpoint as well, and I'm still yet to lose a life. Oh. There's another kind of enemy, it's a cat that actually jumps at you. There's lots of exploration to be done, you don't have to necessarily go the way the level points you. There are some other places you can divert to, although I think I've been there. So yeah, um, hearts to replace your energy are pretty abundant at this point in the game. 
so it's not too hard as I already mentioned. And in fact that's the end of the second stage. So another password given. And we move on to the third stage, which as you can see is a change of scenery. We're now outside on the roofs of houses. And uh, falling off the roofs below the level where I am now will result in death, so I won't do that. And this is where it starts to get a little bit more difficult. There's more uh, enemies, more different types of enemies. You see there's some squirrels there that throw nuts at you, for example. Quite cute characters, but also deadly. Unless you jump on them. And uh, oh yeah, there's also these fireworks that fire up at you from below the screen, which are quite difficult to spot in, at times. Oh, like that, and got me. So there's a lot more things that can do damage to you, especially if you then end up falling off a ledge like that. So yeah, it's getting a little bit harder now. The first two levels fairly straightforward, and then the difficulty level is certainly ramped up a tad. So I've just reached the checkpoint on this third level, and uh, it's a lot more difficult than the preceding levels, as I mentioned. Lots of these fireworks going off, things throwing stuff at you, this is new. It's like a cloud blowing wind at you or something along those lines. It's more about just timing to get past that I think, there's no way to avoid it. There's um, icicles dropping from the ceiling, there's uh, cats patrolling, there's balloons to bounce on, lots of different items to be avoided or not as the case may be. Again, nice backgrounds on this level, there's little snowmen and things. And here's something a bit different, now we've got um, like a clothesline that you've got to shimmy along, uh, avoiding these birds. And also try not to get hit by the things throwing the... Oh, that's a disaster. The things throwing the, the little uh, snowballs or whatever they are, yeah, and there goes another life. Crikey, it's not going exceptionally well. Oh, I just keep walking into these fireworks every time. So annoying. Oh, come on. The lives are fast diminishing. Bit disastrous there, I've got uh, two lives left now to try and make a bit more progress. It's fair to say the difficulty level ramps up pretty rapidly in this game. From being a pretty much a stroll for the first two levels, it's suddenly somewhat taxing. Oh, come on. That's almost impossible to get across. Those things don't actually do you any damage, they just knock you backwards a little bit. Oh, Christ! Is it last life? Oh, come on! So, uh, since I've got no lives left and this is going uh, pretty drastically so far, better sum up what my thoughts are about this final Christmas game and yeah it's pretty decent it suddenly got really difficult uh, and uh, a bit, bit of replay and perseverance is going to be required uh, but that said it's a nice game nice graphics and animation the sounds somewhat grating uh, but overall it's a, a nice offering um, much more in-depth gameplay than any of the other um... oh okay that was alright uh, much more in-depth gameplay than any of the other Christmas games that I've played. Uh, nicer graphics, uh, you know, a, a decent platform game. It would be a decent platform game regardless of uh, whether it was a Christmas game or not. Sorry, I'm just trying to focus on the uh, the action. I've got to participate in there a little bit. So I finally got through that section. 
and I'm faced with a number of bouncing balloons. I've got to make my way across. This looks like it's going to be challenging. It looks like I've got to bounce my way across, landing on each on the balloon correctly each time to make my way across the level. I'm guessing if I miss, I'm falling to my death. So certainly a lot more difficult this level than any of the other previous ones. But I've made it across there and actually completed the level now, which was nice. Another password. So we'll move on to the next level, which is now completely uncharted territory for me looks to be more of the same oh that spikes uh, okay i thought i might be able to jump on that thing there that might be a platform but no learn my lesson there satellite dish there as well oh this is going to be challenging as well, I can see that now. Okay, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. We've got some uh, fireworks going off, and what else have we got? There's a cloud up there that I bet is not going to be very nice to me. Oh, yeah, it's firing lightning at me. Oh, good lord. I'm in real trouble now. One more hit and I think I'm dead. Oh, hand over there. There's a health power up. Oh, come on. This is just ridiculous. So, still surviving by the skin of my teeth. And finally, there's another present to collect. That's the first present for ages. Oh. Yeah. They do throw all kinds of things at you in these later stages. Or oh, it's not even that late in the game, I would imagine. It's actually only the third, fourth level. Oh. Harsh. Not the jolly Christmas game it might first have appeared to be. Um, quite a challenging and sometimes frustrating game, I would say. But that said, uh, it's decent quality. The uh, difficulty level might be a little bit unbalanced, but overall, uh, yeah, it's an interesting game. Can't say much more about it, I'm just going to play through until I inevitably die, which is probably not going to take too long. Oh. I've already lasted much longer than I thought I was going to. That's it, that's game over. Santa Claus Jr. looking not too happy. So all that remains is for me to wish anyone who's watching this a Merry Christmas. I'll be back in the new year with something else, not quite Christmas themed, but definitely winter themed. If you only knew the power of the dark side. Two, one, zero.